Hi everyone, this is Val here. I'm going to show you how to work with some VBA on Excel. Uh, I'm going to show you probably one of the most useful functions I find that I use at my work and hopefully this will help you. So, as you can see here, I've set up a pretty standard Excel sheet. I mean, it could be similar to what you have at home or wherever, but we're just going to work with this uh, purely as an example. So, let's just go into our Visual Basic. If you don't have the Developer tab, you can just go ahead and press um, Alt F11 and it'll bring it right up. So you should get this screen. Um, we're going to go ahead and insert module. We're going to go ahead and re rename it. I'm just going to call it practice. I know, very original. But anyway, so this is how you're going to begin your um, your basic code. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to basically make a macro that goes through an entire column identifies a certain condition and then performs a certain task when it identifies this condition. So let's begin. This is pretty much how you begin every single uh, Mac that you're going to write. You begin with sub, um, then you give it a name, it, it can be whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to call mine practice module, well practice macro rather, and see Excel already fills in some of this stuff for you. So I'm just going to create a few lines, give myself a little space. So what we're going to do is declare a few variables. Um, here, dim and row as integers. So we now have one integer called end row. I'm going to create one called row and another called col. And these will these will be stand-ins for the final populated row for end row. Row that will be your index for the rows, of course, and col will be your index for the columns. Now, let's just go ahead and see what we're looking to do here. All right, we go back to the sheet and say I want to see which which of these amounts have already been paid. So we have our amounts in column A, and for Visual Basic purposes, A is actually considered to be one, and you know B is two, C is three, and so forth. So what we're looking for is in column B or column two. So we're going to go back to Visual Basic and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and assign a value to our integers which currently have no value. So row will be one. It can begin there, but it doesn't have to. So to make things easier, I'm just gonna begin at the row in which there's actual population. So that would be row five. So enter a five for your column integer. You're gonna go ahead and put down two because that's the column we're looking for. And of course, if you're doing this the other way around, and your columns and rows are switched you make the similar switch here. So anyway, now end row is a little trickier. We basically want Excel to assign a value to this in, to this integer that is the last, the bottom most populated row in a certain column. So there are several ways to do this, but this is the one I usually use. So we're going to go ahead and type in range, open up parentheses, quotations, A for the column which you want the last row that's populated. Then we're going to write 65536, close quotations, close parentheses. Now, this is going to go pretty much 65,536 rows down, and it's going to look straight up with this. And XL up, and see, a lot of these are already in Excel, and it helps you in that way. So like I said, it'll go pretty much 65,000 rows down. It'll, it'll begin like searching up whenever it hits a populated row. That's the value that it will assign to this end row integer. So, and um, so we can we could pretty much test it um, basically by using the message box. So if we pretty if we run this right now, we will get uh, we should get the value of end row in a little message box. So let's go ahead and run it. See 12. So if we check it out here, we see that 12 is in fact the last bottom most populated row in these columns. Now one thing I forgot to do is actually make this column B because that's the one we're looking for. In our case it doesn't matter because they're the exact same size but whatever you're doing at home it might be something different. So anyway we know now the end row works we're gonna we're gonna just delete that because we don't need it. So what we're gonna do is create a while loop. So this basically a while loop runs while a certain condition exists. And for us, that condition right now is while the row index is less than the value of end row. So basically, 
as long as row which has a value of 5 is less than end row which has a value of 12. We will and we will we'll find a way to increase the value of row so that it equals 12 and gives us um, and lets us uh, fill this loop. So so while this condition is satisfied we're going to check if cells um, at row then you have your column and these can be integers they can be well they have to be integers but they can be variables or they can be um, just straight up numbers that you we will enter anyway we'll see if the value of of the cell bearing these these parameters the row which is five at the moment and column two so two five so if this value is equal to paid and you have to have the quotations there or otherwise it will think it's a different integer called paid which does not exist and that would probably have a null value so it wouldn't be any useful to you so if we have this value in the we have the value of paid in in the specific cell then we will let's just get a message box going again a oh, message box called paid okay we're going to go ahead and close the if statement and here is how you go through multiple rows basically you you tell row to increase its its value by one now if you if you're familiar with C++ you'll notice that you'll remember that this is the way you do it in C++ well it doesn't work that way in VBA um, so you're gonna have to pretty much create this recursive uh, recursive statement here that will increase the value so anyway we close our end loop, our while loop, and so let's let's just go back through it really quickly. So while row, which is equal to five, is less than end row, which is twelve, we're going to check if if the cells in the second column, column B, are have the value of paid. If they do, we're going to get a pop-up box that says paid, and if that cell satisfies the condition or not, we're going to increase the value of row by one, and eventually it'll it'll become equal to the value of end row we will break out of this while loop and since there's nothing else between the while loop and the end of the the macro it will just break up out of it so let's see if we run this see we have one value of paid second pop-up box with a second value of paid a third pop-up box value of paid and see this is a common problem that you can run in so we have one two, three, four values of paid, but we only got three. Now why is that? So let's run it again. One, two, three, and it pops out. Well that's basically because we have this set to less than end row. So we want it to be less than or equal to end row. That way we should get four because it pretty much quit at row eleven in this case. So let's run it one more time. So we got paid once, twice, three, four, which is exactly what we want. So this is basically very standard code to help you go through an entire column, check out each row and see if the cells there satisfy a certain condition and you can make it whatever you want. It could be if you have a certain value, maybe it's less than than like 100 or or even if it's a certain color or if the font font is bolded, whatever, whatever you might find useful. And and I really find that this very simple Macro here is using a lot of the things I do at work. So, so I hope this helps you out. Um, I'll probably post the code in here. And please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Hope you enjoy this. Bye.